I often hear people moaning about setting up tyres tubeless and talking about how much effort it is, but really this shouldn't be a difficult task. And I've got five ways to show you how to never fail at tubeless setup. So do like and subscribe if you want more content like this in the future. The first way to never fail is to start with a good base and that's rim tape. Now I will always go for tubeless specific rim tape. However, if you are on a budget, you can save a little bit of money by going for something like Gorilla Tape, but you do need the correct width. So do find out what width your rim is and choose the correct width of tape for that. If you already have tape in there and you want to keep it, then do inspect it, clean it up, make sure that there's no cuts or any pieces of tape that are moved from you taking the tire out, for example. Make sure that that is perfect before your tires go back on, otherwise it won't be a perfect seal. Now make sure that your rim is really clean and dry before you put any new tape on. You might even want to rub it down with some isopropyl alcohol afterwards just so that you get a really clean surface because you want your tape to stick. Uh, if it doesn't stick then that's your first sign of failure. Now my biggest tip is to start over the valve and to go all the way around once and then come back over the valve. So the valve gets double but everywhere else gets single. Uh, however, if your tires sit a little loose on your rims, then you might want to go twice around the rim to give a little bit of extra sealing between the tire and the rim. And finally, get yourself a cloth or a sponge dry one and rub it all the way around the tape. You want to be pushing down firmly on the shoulders of the rims where your tire is gonna sit and make sure that that is sealed before you go any further. And that's how not to fail at rim tape. Your valves are really important in this process as well. Obviously, you're gonna need the right ones, whether it's Presta or Schrader, and you're gonna need a good quality pair as well. And don't forget that when you buy a new set, you often get the little rubber plugs here, which come in different shapes so that they fit into your rim properly. Have a go with a couple of different shapes and find out what fits your rim the best because these need to form a tight seal to stop any air getting out. If you're sticking with the same valves and you're not replacing them, then check your valve cores. Are they moving slowly? Are they letting air in and out too slowly? It could be that the valve cores are a little gunked up like this one, and you might need to take it out and give it a really good clean, pull all of that dried up sealant off it, or maybe even replace the cores themselves and keep the existing valves. My big tip here is to stab a hole into the tape rather than cut it or cut across because you want minimal damage to your tape so that nothing can escape. And then when you put the valve in, give it a good push from above so that the rubber piece compresses and you get a really tight closure from the nut on the other side. Now it's all very well having new sealant and tape and valves, but if your tires are in bad condition, you're probably gonna lose air and suffer punctures anyway. So make sure you have a tire that is in good condition. You want to make sure that there's not too many holes that you fixed with tire plugs, and you want to make sure that they're not so baggy around the rim, the air is escaping between the rim and the tire. If it is and you're going to reuse this tire, then do try out my trick of running the tape round a couple of times to create a better seal. However, I'm going to be replacing mine completely. If you're running your existing tires, then make sure that the old sealant has been taken out. It might be too old to work, it might be contaminated, or if it's two different brands, then they might not mix well 
well together and also make sure that the inside of the tire is clean make sure that it's dry get any gunk or old dried sealant off the edges so that it'll work perfectly next time my final tip is to make sure that the tires that you've bought are actually tubeless compatible and also make sure that they're compatible with your wheels. Now, some wheels will specify that only certain brands of tires will work with them. And some tire brands will specify that only certain rims will work with their tires. So do check that out. And also bear in mind that there are things like hookless and hooked rims that can make a difference. So there may be tires out there that are only specifically made for hooked rims, for example, and you might need to buy the right pair. Now, obviously you need to start with a good sealant to have good puncture proofing, but also don't forget to follow the manufacturer's instructions because different brands have a different strategy. Now, this PT's whole shot is about six months in life or six months plus. So around about six months, you wanna be thinking about refreshing it old sealant is not gonna do a great job. And of course, try not to mix brands either, because if you do, they can have a chemical reaction that will cause them not to work to their best. Uh, some may even mix and split, uh, and then it won't be very good at sealing holes. And finally, use the amount that they have said you should be. Now you will be using slightly more for bigger wheels, like 29ers for example, maybe slightly less. Go by the manufacturer's recommendations and don't be stingy when it comes to a new tire because you will need to seal some imperfections from the get-go. So there's two ways to put sealant in and that is to have half of your tire off of the rim and just pour it into the tire. Perhaps use your scoop or your measuring device if you don't have measurements on the side. Alternatively, if your sealant has a straw or if you have a syringe that fits inside your valve without a valve core, then you can actually seat your tire dry with no sealant on both sides make sure it's all sealed and then add your sealant through the valve without the valve core in it it is less messier but I don't think it necessarily gives you any better of a seal Sometimes using a track pump alone won't get your tire to seat properly on the rim. And what you're looking for is for that little bead to be evenly distributed all the way around the rim. Now, if you find that you're putting air in and it's just coming out somewhere, perhaps the tire's a little too loose or baggy, then it might be a change of strategy is needed. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can get yourself a track pump that has a charger and what that will do is it will fill up a canister of air so that you can release it into the tire and then inflate it really quickly. It'll effectively have a rush of air that will shock the tire onto the shelves. Alternatively, if you've only got a track pump and you don't want to buy a new one, you can buy a canister on its own and that can be attached to the pump and then attached to the valve and then you can get your rush of air that way. If this is still not working out for you, then I think my biggest tip is to take the valve core out and try it again, because the valve core can sometimes slow down that air getting in the tire. So that is how you never fail at tubeless setup. Well, hopefully this has helped you, but if you're still struggling after following all those steps, let me know down in the comments below what it is you're struggling with. We'll try and help. Also, if there's a tip that I've missed, then help out the GMBN community by letting us know down in the comments below. But for now, that's all from me, and we'll see you again soon.